Hello friends, in this video we will be talking about a very important technique uh, and very simple one but very important technique to find that whether RNA polymerase uh, can bind with the DNA or not uh, or whether RNA polymerase uh, have the tendency to bind with DNA or not and at which region uh, RNA polymerase is binding and if uh, is the region specific for the RNA polymerase to bind or is there sequence is specific? The answer is yes, but we know that the RNA polymers bind to the specific sequence with the DNA, which is called the promoter sequence. But how we came to know about this concept? Now, the answer lies uh, in this picture over here. Now, let me take a color. Okay, fine. Now, uh, the basic principle lies behind one very, very simple uh, concept is that if we are having the DNA uh, and we are having the DNAs, uh, which is DNAs. DNAs is an enzyme which can cleave DNA sequences irrespective of any sequence. So DNAs is a, a sequence non-specific uh, DNA cleaving uh, enzyme, and this can cleave the DNA sequence at, at any at, at any position actually. So it can cleave phosphodiester bonds at any position and can cleave off the DNA segments out. And uh, and what we are doing in this case, we are utilizing this DNA's enzyme to cleave uh, the same different segment of the DNA. Now we've run two different setup uh, for proving this experiment. One uh, here is a setup in my left hand side, another one is the right hand side. Now the <coughs> stretch of DNA sequences are there and set stretch of DNA sequence, we, we take the stretch of DNA sequence without uh, the RNA polymers enzyme, then we are having the DNA sequence with uh, that bound polymers enzyme. Now, how can we know that whether this DNA uh, this DNA is bound with polymers enzyme or not? For knowing this, the first uh, attempt for us to pro to provide all these DNA strands with uh, phos uh, with a radio labeling, right? So the radio labeling is a very first step. Now, how can we radio label our, our DNA? Now, and we as we know, the DNA backbone is made up with phosphate, so we can utilize this p32 as a radio labeling agent for radio label uh, this uh, strand this phosphate of dna strands at the terminal re terminal phosphate of the dna strand so we utilize it and uh, make it for uh, radio label all the dna is made with radio level in case of the left hand side we, i call it the a tube another one this this right hand side called the b tube now in the a tube all the dna's are radio labeled with p32 as well as in the b tube they are also radio labeled with p32 now the second job is to add dna's to see whether this dna is cutting uh, this dna strands or not now as its normal rule it can cut different strands irrespective of sequences so it cut, it just cut its on its own so we add this dna's uh, into the solution but remember this very carefully when we are adding this DNAs into the solution that we must add a, a minimum amount of DNAs in such a way that we can assume that each single DNA strand can encounter only one uh, region of the DNA which can be cleaved by this DNAs so if we add a higher concentration of DNAs uh, one strand of the DNA can be cut with many DNA mo DNAs molecule but that that is not exactly what we want uh, we want a moderately cut of DNA strands that means DNAs can cut only one region of a DNA strand uh, this is uh, our actual goal uh, it, that cannot be established on uh, on on very very carefully but uh, mistakes can be made but not in a vigorous amount okay so utilize DNAs we add DNAs in both of the tubes tube A and B now you see in the, and, and then we take all those fragments which are uh, digested with the DNAs uh, enzyme and we take them and load them in different gel uh, lines one is the line 1 another one is the line 2 in the line 1 we add A1 uh, sample from A1 line 2 we added sample for, from uh, B okay now uh, in the line 1 what we have found we have found this consistent bands that that actually showing us uh, the different sh uh, segments of DNA that are generated after the uh, after the cleavage of the DNA strands with DNA's enzyme but on the B uh, lane we have also seen the different strand uh, or small segment of strands that are being cleaved or that are generated uh, after the cleavage uh, via the DNA's enzyme but uh, the difference in band pattern suggests us that that there must be th this this part of the sequence is uh, we, we cannot find this part of the region we cannot find any uh, DNA sequences what it suggests us is that that there must be a protein bound with the DNA why because this DNA enzyme can cleave only DNA sequences but when it come to the matter of DNA and protein 
DNA protein interaction or DNA protein hybrid region, DNAs, let me change the color, DNAs cannot cleave cannot cleave DNA protein interaction region so it can only it can uh, only cleave uh, the single uh, simple DNA sequences but when the protein is bound with the DNA in those cases uh, this this enzyme this DNA enzyme is not working at all okay for region so suppose there is a protein RNA polymers bound with the DNA into a particular region and we are adding the, the this DNA in the same way that it cut in the in this tube A now what will happen in this case in tube A it cut in this position here it also cut in this position and the second case it cut in this position but in in this case uh, it cannot cut or, or the DNA cannot cut or it is not able to cut in this position because the protein is bound with this protein is occupying this region and is uh, and it can only cut the DNA sequence but not the protein sequence so it is unable to cut in this part the same way it is unable to cut in that part too but in in the other ways it can cut on these different sequences because it can cu cut in the, uh, this the sequences where only the DNA uh, resides so uh, so if we increase the size of the protein uh, we are we are getting uh, we are going to increase this part of the region of getting no bands no bands means there are less amount of dna there so there are much there must be a protein present there okay by looking at the molecular weight here uh, uh, by running a ladder sequence sorry a ladder sequence in this direction we can actually compare and can suggest the actual size not ac actually the very um, uh, detailed position but uh, a minute change or, 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 or crude value of uh, the molecular weight of the protein that are bound with this uh, DNA sequences okay so this is the basic view of DNA footprinting now with the help of this footprinting looking at this uh, uh, gel pattern we can find whether the protein is bound with this DNA sequences or not but this experiment is uh, done in a very very careful manner it is not totally 100% foolproof because this experiment relies on very important fact that uh, all of these DNA strands and, and only one terminal of the DNA strand must uh, in, must have this phosphate uh, radio level phosphate first thing is that second thing is that that uh, we have to add DNAs in such amount that uh, in such concentration that this DNAs must cut only one region of the DNA strand it uh, may not cut uh, many other region of the same DNA strand okay so this is another very important consideration so it relies on very very different uh, difficult facts so we need to main, main, maintain these different uh, situations to actually get our desired results okay so uh, but, but with the help of this experiment we can determine with the help of this experiment we can actually find whether the DNA is bound with any protein or not and this is the only experiment that can that have that have been done to find out whether RNA polymers is bound with DNA or not uh, and this is uh, the DNA footprinting and I hope it will help you thank you